Good morning there. Uh, welcome to another Niggle Picks video. My name's Nigel. Uh, this time you find me by Hebble End at Hebden Bridge. Hebble End's just on there. By the side of the Rochdale Canal. And the building behind me used to be a pub called the Neptune. We're not here for that. What we are here for is uh, just over that way is Market Street, the main thoroughfare of Hebden Bridge. And I'm doing um, old chapels and churches. Now long gone, uh, but I uh, thought that might be interesting. So let's get on with the video. <music> As you can see in front of me, that is a Methodist church, chapel, whatever you want to call it. And this is the first of the churches that I'm visiting. I know it's still there, but uh, what used to be there was a lot more grand than the, what you can see in front of you right now. Market Street is where all the cars are going past at the front of it. And this was Salem Methodist Church or Chapel. The book can be called, called either. I don't know what makes the difference for them. So yeah, that's uh, Salem Chapel. I'm going to put up quite a few videos. I'm going to get a shot from the other side of it as well. What's surprising me is uh, normally there's a gaggle of geese out the front of the place. I was hoping they'd be there, the noisy little stone to those. Anyway, we're going to go over there we're going to have a look back across to see where it was. So, right now, I hope you can hear me. Right now, we're on Hanging Road Road, which runs off at an angle from Market Street. That's where the chapel struck church used to be. If I can get it uh, perfect so I can overlay a good picture. You can see very busy morning. The road that goes up behind the signpost is Hepton Store Road. It's also what goes down to the left as well. The one to the right that drops off is, as you can probably see, on the sign Lee Wood Road. I'm going to go across to where the sign is. The next chapel was just about where the red car and the house that's hidden behind the wall we've got a photograph to put on from somewhere around about here and this was cross lanes chapel i'm going to go across here now back across to show you oh, there it is just there you can see the graveyard of the chapel and turn it up quite a bit so that's where the chapel was, just a little bit further on perhaps than the house, maybe just where the car is. Got a couple of old pictures I can show you of it. Anyway, next we're going to Foster Lane Chapel. Okay, I've got to go down here. This is the buttress. This is an old ancient pack horse trail. I did mention this on a previous video. Right now I'm on Foster Lane. Uh, you can see it running up that way in front of me. Back this way, down at the far end you can't quite see it. Right at the far end is the uh, Foster Lane Bridge, which was an old pack horse bridge. But right here, just to my right, is where Foster Lane Chapel was. Sadly, it's uh, a little bit sunny here. I've come at the wrong time of day, but yeah. That corner just there where the Windsor Place leading to Spring Grove sign is. So right on this corner where the newish house is was the Foster Lane Chapel. 
I'll go into the shade, see if I can get a better picture. So there, on that corner. Yeah, so this is where Foster Lane Chapel was. And if we could look around a little bit further up Foster Lane, there is the next place I'm going to visit, which is the Tin Tabernacle, which was the precedent of Foster Lane Chapel. So I'll break off here and catch me again a little bit further up there. Here we are at the far end of Foster Lane. Just at the far end it actually meets the uh, Keithley Road. But we're turning to the left. Here we are turning up left. I can't even tell what this is called. I'll put it on. Down at the bottom of the screen hopefully. Just up ahead of us is where the Tin Tabernacle used to be on Unity Street. Just here on this corner is where the Tabernacle used to be. Well, once again, of course, got a, an old photo. There's a bit of a clue to it just on the side of this building. There we go, numbers one to three Tabernacle Row. So these are all relatively new houses. They match them nicely with the old ones further down. Yeah, so this is Unity Street. I'll show you. Just there. Unity Street. I presume that used to be a shop. Somebody will probably tell me. Anyway, on to the next one, which is up at Birchcliff. That's the Birchcliff area. And what we're going to look at is related to the very top building. Just there. That is Birchcliff Chapel, but it's the newer one. There was an old Birchcliff Chapel. So it's definitely onwards and upwards. Just approaching the newer Birchcliff Chapel, you can see it just there. That is where uh, Pennine Horizons has its offices and everything else. Quite an imposing building, but not really here for this, I just thought I'd show you it. So yeah, that's where Penine Her Heritage and Penine Horizons have their uh, offices and businesses. I've got to go higher up Birchcliff, and the little road goes off to the left, called Sandy Gate. this first one, this is where the uh, car parking and Hebden Bridge Hostel is. You can see Sandy Gate just there, to, to the left. I'm going up there. breath. Here we are, this is the entrance to the graveyard.
There we go. The chapel is further on over that direction, I won't go any further. It's a private place now. Although there are some people I do know in here. A little bit further round. Um, just wondering what that used to be. It is up to the side of the graveyard, so obviously something to do with it. A little bit further along Sandy Gate, we're not too far from one of the main walls of the chapel. Some more steps which go up into, I think, another part of the graveyard. See there, the substantial wall coming up and the railings on top. This was part of the chapel. Well, the you know the frontage of the chapel. The chapel's actually a little bit further back. I'm on Birchcliff Road again, a bit lower down, and we're by the side of Stubbing School, just there, you can see, and the building just there is what remains of St John's Church. It's now homes, houses, etc. I'll put on screen, you know, like the rest of them. When it was uh, built, when it was Stopped being used. We'll go and have a look in there. There's a bit of a memorial garden. We have a seat, and there I presume that used to sit in front of the church anyway.
Well, I'm in the uh, memorial garden and this, I'm told, is the remains of the church. I've just taken a photo down the side, so I'll put that up. That, in fact, is the remains, or, well, virtually the whole of the Sunday school. Nearly as, it was nearly as big as the church, quite a big place. And a gentleman who lives in one of the flats that's there has just told me that the person who developed the flats lived in one of the flats of the Sunday school. And then when the um, church became derelict, he bought it and took the top parts of it off so he had a better view from where he lived. Don't know whether that's true. It's a damn good story. On now to the next one. Now this is the surprise one. We're going over there to Albert Street. That's Albert Street. And we're actually going to the Hebden Bridge Sports and Social Club. Now why do you ask? Well, I'll answer that question when I get down there. Well, we're here on Albert Street. Just crossing the road, so I'm on the other side to the Sports and Social Club. There's always a big car parked in front of me, but anyway. So, oh, crap, crap per uh, cameramanship. So that building there, believe it or not, I've got it on the an 1890 map as being the St John's Mission Church. I'm going to take you around the back in a minute and show you the bits of evidence. But if you look at the door, it's a rather wide door with a small door to the right of it. So, you know, question marks on it. But yeah, I'll put the map up. You know, this used to be a mission church, St John's Mission Church. And then they moved up to the previous uh, building, which was not long lasted. Right, we've uh, got to go around the back now. We're down this lovely little place. So now we're around the back of the Dinbridge Sports and Social Club in Garden Street Car Park. This used to be houses all the way along. I'll put another picture up of that. Uh, yeah, this is the back of the Hebden Bridge Sports and Social. Nothing striking about it, except when you get around this corner. It's a rather large Porsche in the way, but just there, you can see two very chapel-like windows, bricked up. So, many thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video, I hope there weren't too many mistakes, I feel like I did a few, but hopefully I've corrected them. Anyway, thanks for watching my Nickel Peaks video, if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up, and if you really liked it, give me a follow on YouTube. Many, many thanks, catch you on the next one.